So we all saw the Tyreek Hill uh, footage and what happened to him while he was on his way uh, to play a game for the Miami Dolphins and how he was um, pulled out of the car and wrestled to the ground. And, you know, um, it's, it's some things that, that, you know, I said Tyreek could have done better. But also the police job is the de-escalation. Uh, they went way too far. Uh, they, they was not, their, lives was, their lives was not in jeopardy. Um, there was no reason to show that much use of force. But something like that happens all the time across America. And we just got a chance to see it now because it's on video. But what about the guy that's not in a Lamborghini or or, or high-priced sports car or that's not an athlete? Just a regular Hakeem or Brian. What about that? It happens all the time. And sometimes even worse. Sometimes uh, brothers are unalived. So my thing is, I, I, saw, I saw Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith uh, and these guys on ESPN talking about this, and I was very upset. I was very upset in the way that they that that they were speaking to this. Now, if it's 2024, and we're still saying, "Hey, we gotta have this conversation with our children," you might not make it alive. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Say yes, no, and excuse me. Wait a minute. I thought I thought we was going towards this racial utopia. Kamala's running for president. She has a white husband. Um, uh, uh, the Democrats you know, has our back and all these things, but we still have to have the same type of conversation, then what are we, uh, then what are we voting for? Because it's obvious that we are a, a distinctive group of people here in America where we still have to be careful in 2024 with everything that happened to us on this land. But before I go any further, Cameron and Mace uh, spoke on this too. And they had something to say. And I understand what Mace is saying from a hood perspective. But let's listen to what Cameron and Mace, the first half of what they had to say, and we'll come right back. So the body cam footage of Tyreek Hill's detainment was released. The police approached Tyreek and knocked on his window. Tyreek told the officer, don't knock on my window like that. He then didn't want to roll his window down and the situation completely escalated. After seeing the footage, what are you guys' thoughts on the incident? Oh, man. <sighs> to be honest with you, were they excessive? Yes. Were they, did they overdo it? Knee in the back, you know, wrangled him down, uh, face down, et cetera. Yes, they were excessive. But to be honest with you, and I'm not taking the police side, if Tyreek would have gave them niggas his license, it probably would have been over with in, in five minutes. Yo, I got a game. I'm Tyreek Hill. Sorry about not having my seatbelt on. I got to go. That would have been the end of it. I mean, man, give them like my fucking window like that, nigga. Nigga knocking on his window. That's what I'm talking about. That's the aggression. But this is what I'm saying. Just think about it. Sometimes, a lot of times, not just police scenarios or anything, you kill people with kindness. And and if you kill them with kindness, they can't say nothing. So if he would have just gave him his license, like, look, I got a game in a minute. Could you please give me my ticket because I'm going to be late? Probably wouldn't have happened. Were they overly aggressive once the situation got out of hand, the police I'm talking about? Yes, absolutely. Knee in the back, putting his arm, they arm around his neck, etc. But I'm telling niggas how to avoid that. Because a lot of times we do get angry when you come up to the to uh, our window. Like, I'll give you a situation with a police officer with me. I already know I'm just not arguing with police because like May said, we were talking about it off camera. Right then and there, they're the judge and jury. So if they feel like they should shoot you or tase you or lock you up or whatever, you don't get to tell your case till later. Yeah. <laughs> that particular moment right there, they get to decide what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, I was I was speeding. We was, we was racing on the highway one day and I got pulled over. And the cop pulled me over, and uh, I could, I was speeding. I know I was doing what I wasn't supposed to be doing, et cetera. But he came, he had me wait for 30 minutes for he processed the ticket, et cetera. So he's holding my ticket in, in the hand, and he's giving me a lecture. And I told him, are you going to give me the lecture or the ticket? I don't want both. <laughs> I, I don't mind taking one or the other, but I don't want to be lectured if you're going to give me a ticket. He said, you know what, stay right there, I'll be right back. And made me wait another 35 minutes to get wherever I had to go. He's like, mm -hmm. I was thinking about which one I want to give you. Here's the ticket. <laughs> but he wasted an hour and a half of my time. So these niggas be, you gotta realize, these police be mad, they be aggy, they probably not getting the pay that they wanna pay. You in these foreign cars, they angry. 
I'm not saying that Tyreek did nothing wrong, but I'm telling black Americans, these niggas don't like when we styling, so just be careful out there. And especially, uh, you know, we got kids and nephews and cousins and nieces that's young coming up. Y'all need to just relax, don't argue, because nine out of 10 times getting hostile with the police when you're pulled over doesn't go our way when you're a, a male or female of color. So then that's where he went wrong, being aggressive. I'm just saying, you told a nigga, wild loud or don't. <laughs> That's what you... No, I'm saying if you're going to be that wild, then know that when you get out the car, they're just matching your energy. They, that's what they did. You you showed a form of aggression, and they just matched it. He didn't mean it, but you know. So if he was currently killed, if he wasn't him, would he have gone to jail normally? He went to jail. Well, he's detained. Point B. Probably would have gotten more than that. Yeah, that's a fact. Where we're from, if he, if they tell you get out the car, and I'm like, you know what, bro, I ain't getting out the car. Mm -hmm. So then you know right there, it's like it's like being in the streets. You know somebody say something to you, and you know you don't want smoke. You take the nonviolent approach. But if you take the violent approach, when they get aggressive, you can't act like you don't know what happened. You know what happened. So we basically heard what they had to say. But again, like I said, I understand sometimes when you get pulled over, you know, it's a cat and mouse game, man. Back in the day, we get pulled over, we give a fake name. You do what they need. To, you, you let them do what they need to do so they can go ahead about their business. But there's a lot of, it's, man, there's a lot. Listen, I remember one time I got into a fight with an officer and the other one threw me through a glass window. They locked me up, charged me with all kinds of stuff. I've been through all that, right? So I understand as time went on, I understood, I understood, you know what, let me just be quiet. I mean, you know, let, let them do what they got to do because back in the day, they didn't have cameras. You know, they wasn't wearing cameras. They just they, they just say whatever they want to say, do whatever they want to do, and anything can happen. So, you know, it's, it's just crazy. But let's listen to the second half of what uh, Cam Ryan and Mace was saying. I do just want to add, though, like, violent or not violent, different outcomes happen to different people all the time. So it's like, even though... You know, like you're saying, like, don't be aggressive. People have different definitions of what you define aggressive as. Because I don't even think he was being aggressive. Like, granted, obviously, I don't know Tyreek Hill personally, and neither do the police officers. That's just him being him. And like you guys were kind of saying, anybody can take that how they want to take that. Yeah, so. I, think, I think the point that Killer said was really the point. They're the judge and the jury, so you don't decide. You comply. You could apply because they have the, the vantage point to say whether this goes good or bad for you. So that's not in your power, even though you have the power to make whatever choice you want or whatever statement you want. At the end of the day, the man on the opposite side of the glass is determining if it's going to be a good or bad day for you. So to not consider that will be unwise. Yeah, and look, you could be right. I'm not talking about you two talking. I'm talking about in this situation. You could be right and like, this nigga's dead wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But you ain't going to be able to tell that story till later because you're going to jail right then yeah. and there. You know what I'm saying? That's all I was saying about it. Yeah, so we, I was joking at, front, at first, but it's, it's really not a joking matter because this happened to black people all the time. It's just so happened that this is Tariq Hill and we got to see it, but far worse have happened to males and females. Yeah. It's a video out now circulating on social media and it's a white cop going through a traffic stop. And he's like, he, he knows the law, but he's white. And he says, look, I'm so-and-so. I don't remember the verbiage actually, but he basically tells them at the, at the drive, at the window, look, I've, I'm so and so. I know my rights, and I have the right not to answer any questions. Yada 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 yada. So the cop says, "Okay, cool." So the cop asks him for his license. He gives him his license, then he asks him, "Was you drinking tonight?" The nigga just looks straight. He already told him, "I don't have to answer no questions." Mm -hmm. And the cop gave him his license back and kept going. That's not gonna happen for you, black people. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, not gonna happen for you, bro. And that's a, that's another point that while we're talking about this, it's like the the forest has been taught who to respect. 
That's the real issue. The real underlying issue is that the force and those on the force have been taught who to respect. So there's there's a certain people that they respect that I could see one guy, he gets in the car and he says, you know what, why are you stopping me, a little white kid or whatever? And and they, they do not deal with him the same way because they've been taught to respect this culture of people a different way. And that and that's just what it boils down to. It's just like if I teach everybody in this room, you know, when Cam comes in, we must treat them like this. Then that's how people are going to treat you. They're going to treat you how they were trained to treat you. And I think that's the bigger issue that we got to teach people and the officers that you got to you got to care for this culture of people as well, even though they're not like you, because the actions and the aggression shows that there's a fear towards us. That anger that he displayed to Tyreek is really a fear, but it's, it's coming out as aggression. But thankfully, you know, Tyreek Hill was okay and was able to continue on and play because not everybody gets that second chance. You know, I'm, I'm going to do a live stream and I'm going to double down on what I'm saying because I was very disappointed um, in some of the things that hearing our people talk. The way we the way we talk about this, we have uh, black Supreme Court justices, lawyers, doctors. We have black people in very powerful powerful positions today. The problem that I have is we are still going on major platforms before the world telling in 2024 with where we have the history. Everybody saw with the Negro, the African American, the colored man and woman and child has been through in this country, and we're on platforms today still saying, hey. You better keep your hand on the steering wheel. You better be quiet. You better do this. You better do that. Because this, what, uh, uh, saying that, because if you don't comply, it could cost you your life. How are we still saying this? At what point, at what point, right, does black people say, no, we're not, we're not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not teaching my children that no more. And we're not tolerating that anymore. Because if I got to tell my son, when he go outside, you better do this because it can cost you your life from a police officer. Then don't talk to me. Don't talk to me about Democrat or Republican Party and none of that. We're still, in, as black people, we're still under tyranny. That's what we're still under. Because it's confusing to me. It's confusing. Like y'all, y'all throw these children so many different signals because y'all, uh, the elders and the black people of my generation, are powerless. We go on these platforms and we talk like cowards. We know that there's certain groups in this country that this never happens to. And it won't. And if it ever happens, it'll be severe and swift punishment because they won't tolerate it. So why are we on platform saying we're not tolerating this no more? Enough is enough. Why? Why? Because whatever he did, it didn't warrant didn't warrant for them to do all that, all what they did. But I'm going to cut this video short, man, right here, man. If you made it this far in the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to Street Media TV. Leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Remember, I love y'all. Till the next time. Peace.